welcome to the next session on eyes apply portal so i was only trying this now right this again and again ending in error now i tried modifying all the parameters still no success at all somewhere some setups are wrong because of it got on the acp collection is not running at all okay now see this now now we are going to go for what happens here consigned inventory which is very famous in many many companies now <coughs> let us first of all go there and then create a supplier for this one for the consigned inventory <coughs> like when oh, we need to go for bmi and when we need to go for the uh, let us finish off and we'll discuss on this now <coughs> let us finish off and then afterwards we'll discuss on when we had to go for which and then I'll click on create supplier let me go for a consigned supplier now <coughs> consigned supplying is what is nothing but just uh, uh, just in time in a just in time concept what happens you will be having material at your place and then uh, whenever you need it you pay and then take it the biggest problem with the supplies is what the date time if you ask for it then you know say 7 days late time they will ask for <coughs> and your production is getting hampered because of that but if you have a ready made stock available within your premises for which you need not have to pay and then whenever you need you consume and then you pay this is called consigned inventory and then it is now working excellently in many many organization now so b1 underscore cons underscore sub so i am not doing it they can apply now So consigned supplier, I'm going to create now. <clears throat> I'm not creating a consigned supplier. And then uh, create new organization. <clears throat> Many companies are now practicing it. And BMI is also coming up like anything. GE has already started practicing it. I took a class for them, but how to do this? It is excellently working for them. And then uh, they were very happy. <clears throat> and then click on save on the main one. And then afterwards, what happens? You have to push it over here. Now I click on this payment details, and then make one of the payment details is for check payment. So check payment is the default payment. I'm enabling it. And then click on save now. Get on that. So you know that you go to the address book. Let us create an address now. <coughs> click on create. So it is here. We are one. And then go there. I will make it a site one. Purchasing and payment. I am enabling. I am going to click on continue. It will throw an error now. Doesn't matter. I can accept this error and then go ahead on this one. Click on continue. Select it and then click on apply. Come and do that. Then afterwards, we go there and then go to the contact directory and then we will now give a contact directory for it. Now, click on create. Then email b1 underscore cons at the rate gmail dot com. So b1 underscore cons the one. Click on create as well. Then what? And then select all the responsibilities for this now, and then click on apply. Then it shows what happens. He is now having a user account now. B one underscore cons at gmail dot com is a user account by which what happens? He will log in to the system now. So for each supplier, we need to just create this particular setup, right, sir? Is yeah. provide the assignment of the responsibility? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or is there any other way to provide the responsibility to supplier? So you see, even supplier can uh, send a registration request, and then what happens? He can even accept it also. So there are some minor changes that you can go through the document. Document will explain about how to create the user account for this. And this we are creating it. So supplier can even send a requisition, and then what happens? He can accept it, and then he can even do it also. Oh, okay, okay. So that way, what happens? Not possible, possible. But somehow or other, what happens? The user account has to be created. That's all. Yes. Okay. So we can register in our website, and then afterwards, uh, what happens? Uh, we will be uh, then our, we will approve it. Just from mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. Now we don't know the first name, last name, and then email name. All. So let him fill up everything, and then send it to us. And then uh, what happens? We will be doing it. So that is another way of doing it. So it's all one and the same. Actually. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Now we are going to make him as a consigned supplier. And click on the purchasing. You click on the purchasing. 
and then you go to the cell billing area. So here we are going to make only pay on use only. Click on drop it on and then receipt is a payment use. So only when you use, you are going to make a payment. This is called consigned supplier now. And then invoice you know, number level is pay side or consumption advice. I don't know your consumption advice. So we, on the consumption advice, what happens? We are going to make a payment. Invoice number level is consumption advice, pay on use. So he becomes a consigned supplier because of this setting. So when he supplies, he will not get a payment. Only when we use, he will get a payment. Got it? So this is the way, fine, click on save. So we are now made him as a consigned supplier. Right, click on save, and then we're all done. So changes have been saved now. We'll click on save again. It is not done, fine, go there, and then log. Fine, close. Now, let us go and then log in now. The log go via uh, this thing itself. <coughs> Go there, it's a uh, EBS dot portal.com. Let us log in as a supplier now. So it's b1 underscore cons at gmail.com. And the, the password is welcome. The system gives a password, the standard password is welcome. The password expires. So you know, there's a password and then the new password. I'm going to give it fine. It is welcome one. So click on submit by which what happens? We go into the home page now. Update <coughs> the password. Yes. So go to the ISA Play Portal Access, and then he would have got, he would have logged in with this now. So he will be getting a message now. He will now have a look at the message, and then afterwards, what happens? The message has come now, email has come. He will now click on the mail. So the mission enterprise is the company. Find for which what happens? He can log on through this, and then this one, and then the password is welcome. Like that is coming. He has already logged in, and then he will not be OK. And then uh, in his email, it will be getting. So click on the phone now. So the message vanishes once when you read it. Now let us go and then create an item in the system and then will not do it. So here what happens? I'm going to create an item now. Item master items. On M1 organization, I'm going to create and go there. Let us create it. It's a consigned item. <clears throat> so let me create a consigned item. So it's B1 underscore cons underscore item one is a consigned item. So consign it up and go on and apply the template. The purchasing template is applied. And then afterwards, we go to the purchasing and then you know give a list price for this one. So the list price is 10. I'm giving it fine. And then afterwards, what happens? You go to the general planning table. Yeah? You go to the general planning table. Yeah? And then here in the bottom, what happens? You what happens? You can know uh, yeah. the general planning table. Yeah? You put a tick mark on the consign. Right? You put a tick mark. On the general planning table, yeah? you have to go down. So the general planning tab region, you have to go down and then put tick mark on the consign. So that's sufficient, right? So the item becomes a consigned item. <clears throat> so nothing else is required as such now. This now the person needs to be seen that nothing else is required. Here, yeah, nothing is required as such apart from that. Uh, the general planning tab region, only one phone setup is required. So then commit, cut plus commit. And then let me assign this item to the org now. <coughs> So B1 underscore cons underscore item on no credit my alt key and then move. Now we have to have the ASL BPA combination. Yes, sir, ASR is not required for it. That is ASL BPA combination is required. So let us go and then create a BPA now first of all. Let us go and then create a BPA. So go to the purchase orders and then let us create a BPA for this. So we will now create a BPA and then insert the BPA to ASL and that is sufficient. And the BPA will be communicated to the supplier also. So we'll be having a communication on this one. Fine, go there. Let us make a BPA, blah. And then it is a B1 percentage, cons percentage, fine, the supplier. And then go there. Here also, what happens? The same item, B1 percentage, CO percentage, and then go tap the item, the consigned item, which I'm putting it, and go there. So we will not be having anything other than this now. Fine, click on the amount agree. And that will be getting copied to the terms, the amount limit, fine. And then give the effective date. And then remove the AL and then remove the MR. Okay, so today is, you know, is yesterday's date showing, doesn't matter, because of uh, the system timing is moving. 
sir uh, in bpa the, the major demerit is if, if somebody remove the amount limit then they can release as much as infinite infinite cases so that too whenever you are having a adc you remove the limits no limits at all so that whatever you can have the requester will not desire on this the complex commit well let me go on and approve it now fine so this is now getting so 6637 is the one click on approve and this will be perpetually communicated to the supplier immediately through i supply portal so 63 zone is getting approved now <clears throat> and you can see it gets reflected immediately on supplies portal upon approval and that is the beauty of i supply portal so i supply portal will now provide a keyhole opening to the supply through which what happens you have uh, uh, limited uh, resources can be seen by him now. so 63 zone so if you go there and have a look at it so click on the home you can now see the bottom of the purchase order there and click on home again and you can see the purchase orders come here 63 zone has come it's a bpa now now i will not go there but then do the asl part of it 6631 is not and go there for the asl part you go to the supply base and then go to approved supply list here you're going to make an entry on this one. item is what b1 percentage co percentage is in your tab supplier is also b1 percentage co percentage in your tab site is what and then go there it is approved and then only for what happens if the global will be no only for bmi but i am unable to show it to you fine only because the collection was not happening But whereas the remaining ones are yes. So global is this. Thank you for the approval. Arrivals. And then go there. And then here we go there. And then see this now. Fine. It's a BPA. And then you tap control L. It's becoming a fine. Go there. Line number one. The release method is all applied. And then save it. Now we are going to go to the inventory and then make this as a consigned one. Fine. Go to the inventory. And then at the bottom consigned from supplier inventory. Previously what happened? We enabled BMI. Now we are enabling consigned. Building cycle is normally zero days. Because he is already waiting for it, and so what happens? He will not wait for any more billing cycles, as no. And consign from supplier and commit. So <clears throat> we don't consume on aging actually. Uh, if required, if the supplier says you have to consume on aging, we are doing. Otherwise, we can leave it as it's now. <clears throat> so, sir, what is the usage of that one? Can you come again? So I mean, this consume on aging. Yeah. Say for example, he is now supplying banana. <clears throat> oh. Banana will remain in the shelf only for a maximum period of around four days time. And then if he oh. is consume on aging, and then two days now. After two days, you have to consume. Otherwise, what happens? It will be a base for both of them. He cannot also use it. You cannot also use it, and then it will be there. So once of the two days is consumed, it gets automatically consumed, and you have to pay for it. So consumption is now created automatically upon aging. So, for example, sir, if supply, for example, supplier has given banana around hundred. Okay. The banana has come, and then what happens? It is now lying in the shelf for two days now. The right. system creates a consumption advice after two days' time. Whether you use it or not, you have to pay. Oh, so it's a loss to the. Yeah, you are supposed to use it. He says right. that what happens? Edible items cannot be kept in the shelf for a very long time. Okay. Okay. So if you say ninety days or sixty days or whatever, maybe the time you are going to give. This is a, a supplier imposed restriction. Other than we have to honor him basically. Supplier. Uh... Supplier imposed restriction. Impose restrictions. Okay. Imposing this restriction on you, so you are not on aging. Okay, sir, got it. So the system creates the consumption advice automatically, and then once the consumption advice is now done, what happens? That we have to pay him also. So it is in your uh, interest. What happens? You have to see that you are consuming it before it is getting aged. And billing cycle? Billing cycle is what? Uh, if we say ten days. So once the consumption advice is made, after ten days only you are going to make a payment, and some of them may not agree for it also. Fine. So in the billing cycle, will now start after ten days of your visit. So if it's zero, it will be immediate actually. We can oh, okay. bill it immediately. So in billing cycles, if you know the payment terms, there is a billing cycle is there. <clears throat> Fine. Uh, you have uh, you can talk to the financials. Mm -hmm. There, what happens? Uh, the next month, and then what happens? Uh, there is a billing cycle. Is there? The billing cycle starts from some days, twentieth of uh, next month, and then nineteenth uh, of next month. So, uh, in that billing cycle only, it will be considered for payment. Actually, okay. For example, milk you are consuming every day, and then what happens? In the billing cycle only, you will now pay for the whole month. Fine. You can uh, talk to financials; they will tell you about the billing cycle. Right there. There is a billing cycle concept in financials, so I am not fully aware of it. So they will tell you about this. Okay. So the item has now become consigned from supplier, and then the billing cycle is zero days and close it. The days of month, and then something like that. Some concept is there. 
find days of month and then uh, uh, month, uh, right, sir, that is? months are heard and then days of month. Same concept is there. Okay. Right. So through which whatever the billing cycle gets determined. <coughs> Talk to the financials. So the item is not done. My, now for this, what happens? We cannot create any release at all. Release is not possible. Fine, go there. We cannot make a release. If we try to make a release, that we cannot make a release for the consigned item at all. Fine, go to the purchase orders <coughs> and then go to the releases. If we try to make a release for six six three zero, it will not allow you at all. For consigned material, we cannot make a release. The system creates the release. You cannot make a release at all. I cannot let. So go there. Line number one. You attack. It says you cannot create releases for consigned material. So oh. system only will be creating the releases and we cannot create them. If it is a consigned item, we cannot create a release at all. System will be creating the release. Now, this is a setup we have made for the consigned item. Now what happens? We are now going to make a standard purchase order. So we will now make a standard purchase order. Close it now. So after having done this, what happens? We already have this in this place now. In this place, we already have it now. So now we are going to make a SPO now. So, so he is going to supply only against SPO. This is only for what your uh, tracking purposes. This uh, this thing is now done. So let us go on and make a SPO. Go to the purchase order. So supplier is what B1 percentage. B1 percentage is going to attack. So sir, BPA, BPA is required as well as SPO is required. Yes, BPA is for uh, the setup purposes. Now. Fine. Okay. ASL BPA is for the setups. Now, if the setups is not done, it will not work at all. And then now. On a standard purchase order only, he's going to do it. And even on a BPA, what happens? We cannot ask him to uh, only on a BR, he will not supply. BPA is only a contract. Mm -hmm. 1000 quantities, I'm giving it now. Fine, go there. And then click on the shipments. And then ensure that everything is correct now. Fine, go to the receiving controls. The receiving controls, the receipt the receive routing must be direct. Because what happens? It is his material. It is not our material now. Right. So even when he receive, it will go into his premises only. So within our uh, what's called battery limits, we will be providing him a space in which what happens, he will now make a tent or a place and then he will now stock all the items. So within our battery premises, he is going to stock everything. So once when he stocks everything within our battery premises, it is his material and not our material. But his material available within our battery limits and then we can draw at any time whenever we draw. That is the advantage. Mm -hmm. So okay, okay, it must be direct delivery. And then let us approve it. So the moment approve is to what happens, the supplier will be getting communication, email notification also will be getting it. Now mobile communication is also made. You will now get a mobile alert also upon purchase orders being approved. And close it. And then you will now get a mobile alert also. Find click on approve. 6638 is not done. So he will now get a mobile alert also. In the class, they have all made mobile alerts for all the suppliers. So mm -hmm. now 6638 is vanished. I don't know why. So you go there and then see on this now. And you just refresh it now. 6638 is coming or not. God. 6638, what happened? <clears throat> Go to the purchase order summary. 6638, let us query now. 6638, click on find now. It is an in process. You go to inquire and then we actually straight. Oh, you may submit the. God, it has gone to Cassib now because what happens? The amount is more, I think, probably. And then uh, it has now gone to Cassib now. <clears throat> I don't know why. So fine, it should not go to this. So let us go then log in as C Brown. Welcome. Fine. Go oh, there. Long. And then let us open it up. It. So for every user, it's a welcome, sir. Password in operations. Yeah, yeah. Okay. In uh, Vision, what happens is all welcome. Now. So let us go on then uh, through Mozilla. Let me log in through the C Brown and then uh, welcome. I don't know why it is not there. What is the problem? From some setups, I would have made something. For some of the class, I think probably it's not going on there. So let's keep it going. So let us now log in through C Brown. Welcome. Fine. Cassie Brown is C Brown. The username. C B R U W N. And then welcome is a password. So should have got a notification for this now. So click on it. There's a notification. 663 has come for your approval. Fine. Click on it. Let us approve it now. Let us come from stock back. So the notifications come over here. Some setup problems. I am. I was making some experiment on something, and then what happens is not come again. Otherwise, otherwise it won't be a problem at all. So click on it, and then open it. Open the notification now. Fine. Click on approve that. I am going to approve it. Click on approve. So it is not getting approved. So once it is approved, the supplier will be getting a communication that it is approved now. 
so it is not done gone there so let us go there and see is not this place what happens 6638 as to click on four <coughs> go there and have it one the chick we got it so 6638 is up there so against which what happens is going to supply now right let us let us see that how is supply 6638 is not though you go there and then if you refresh it what happens is take a copy of it and then go to query more paste then refresh it you will not see this place is up there so now supply is going to supply let us say 400 quantities against this we go there and then we will not receive it when we are receiving and then receives it is a direct receipt 663 is a direct receipt so we are now going to perform the receipt from the gate and then we will not make any inspection at all because it is his item and click on fine and then go there and then see this <coughs> close it and then we select it and then 400 quantities are going to receive because I enable the blind receipt, so what happens is not showing me anything at all. So 400, I'm going to receive it now. And then remember, it has to be received on the expense sub inventory. It is not our material at all. Remember, it has to be received on the expense sub inventory. So in this place, what happens? We have a consigned inventory is available. It is an expense sub inventory. So you must receive it on the expense sub inventory. Remember, because it is not our material, it is a supplies material. And then go and commit. Otherwise, our stock value will go up now if you receive on asset sub inventory. So expense of inventory, our stock value will never go up. Otherwise, material auditor will not come on and shop. How come the asset has gone up? My goodness. So if you go there and see this now, I will show you the what's called the expense of inventory of this now. Go there. You go to yes, oh yes, and then enter in, and then control F1 if you refresh it, find the M1 organization. You go there and then refresh it now. You will now see the consigned inventory, which is an expense of inventory. The first one, you cannot see. It is an expense. It is not an asset at all. So the moment you remove it, it becomes an expense of inventory. That means what? Materials in this sub inventory will not be costed at all. Costing will not take place because it is not my material. It is supplies material. Now, we will now go on and have a look at this online availability, online quantity. Now, it will not show the 400 quantity belongs to supplier and not us. Go there. And then I will not query for this now. It is a supplier's material. I go on and query. So, out of 100,000, what happens if you expand it? Expand it. On and expand it, expand this in the consigned inventory, and then if you go on and see this now, right, you can now see that this 400 <coughs> on and quantity. So we have a 400 on and quantity, but the owner is not B, it is what the supplier, owning party is a supplier. So supplier owns it, we are not owning it, right? We are not, owning it. so we have owned it. And now, what happens? We are now going to draw, say, let's say 300 quantities from this place, we will not draw for our thing. So 300 will belong to us and then 100 will belong to him. Got it now? So we are going to consume 300 out of, from his stock. From his stock, we are going to consume 300. So let us do that consumption now. Right? Out of 400, I'm going to draw 300. So for 300, we are the owners. When we are the owners, the owning party will be blank. If the owning party is some supplier, then he's the owner. Got it? So let us go on and draw 300. I close it. So I go to transactions and then go to consigned transactions. So we are going to consume now. Fine. This is called transfer to regular. The transaction is known as transfer to regular. So transactions, consigned transactions, the navigation, double click on it, and then let us transfer it to regular. Click on this. Fine. We can now have two types of transactions. One is transfer to regular. And if you feel that you have drawn excess, we can even transfer back to consigned also. We can even transfer back to consigned. So transfer to regular is a transaction. Click on OK. And then click on transaction lines now. And then here I will not put the item, find B1 percentage, C1 percentage. And then go there. Sub inventory is what? Consigned sub inventory. Consigned sub inventory. And the owning party is what? B1 percentage, C1 percentage. We would have the owning party. So it is a supplier side combination of the owning party. Go for that. So we have available is 400, out of which what happens? We are not going to consume there. And remember, there will be a Lakshman Reka. And then you just drag it across the Lakshman Reka. Then what happens? Sita is yours. Anything which crosses Lakshman Rekha is yours. So many companies will be having this Lakshman Rekha concept. And then anything which is crossing the Lakshman Rekha is yours. Now 300 quantities, now Sita is yours now. <laughs> Got it? Okay. So this is what is. So, but it is still lying in the same place only. <clears throat> Control S commit. <clears throat> so ownership transfer of that. Transaction amount agreed exceeded. Oh God. How come the amount agreed has exceeded? I wonder, we had given 1000, right, sir? But the amount agreed, uh, I don't know why it's so. Fine, let me make only one now. Find something uh, 
amount agreed where exactly it is coming i don't understand so i now make only some say two quantities somewhere the amount agreed is gone in now fine control is coming you see this fine this is not two quantities is gone in now you know how i look at the purchase order now i can go here the amount agreed has come over here and then go to the purchase orders and then here let's query 6637 now 6637 and then query this one so if you go to the agreement now there is no amount agreed at all I couldn't understand this one. Find somewhere this this one. So amount the grid is exceeded is no saying. Only in the agreement will be mentioning this one. Right? The terms we don't have any amount limit or things. And amount the grid does not have any what's called uh, you know this thing. Okay, any of you know see this later on. <clears throat> you don't understand this why this is coming. There is no minimum. There is no point agreed. Probably we have to give some amount the grid. I think probably we are not giving it. But two is accepting it. It's accepted two. That one is right. now. What happens if you go and then see on the supplier's portal, right? Supplier portal. Here, what happens if you go there and then you go to the product now, and then you go to the consigned inventory. You go to the product and then see the consigned inventory. Now, here, what happens? We can now query on the item. Now. Item is what B one percent, C one percentage. I'm going to that. I'm going to click on go now. So the item, if you query it, it will now say consigned on and how much it is there. So you click on this detail. It will now show you the consigned on and. It says what three ninety eight is there. Two has been consumed by the yeah, customer. So for the supplier, we are the customers. So supplier, we has got three ninety eight available there. Got it now? So we go there and see this. So consigned online is there. Consigned shipments. If you click on it, how much has been shipped? So four hundred has shipped out of four thousand. So uh, it has been shipped four hundred and not only. And go back. So consumption advices. Nothing has been created until now. So we have to create a consumption advice. So there is no consumption advice at all. For the two quantities, and then the consigned receipts. If you click on, if you click on the consigned receipts, <clears throat> it will now show you again what happens. Four hundred has been received by us as a consigned receipt. So he has made a consigned shipment for four hundred, and then we have received it also. Consigned so, shipment is four hundred, and then consigned receipt is four hundred. So it will all the customer uh, receive informations, right? No, it's all supplier receiving information. For the implementing company, the suppliers. This is actually the suppliers portal. For him, we are the customer. It is the supplier's portal. He is now looking at his portal. The supplier is now seeing all these things. Okay, how much amount he sent? How how much? Yeah, he has sent this much. Four hundred. He has sent the consignment shipment. He has sent four hundred. And then what happens? How much has been received in the game? Probably something might have gone missed out or something like that. So the consignment receipt is also four hundred. Right now, so consignment receipt by the by his customer. And then if there is any returns, also it will not show you. And if you know the metal transactions, what are things we have made? I am telling you, Vishwam. Metal transaction. So initially, four hundred and two has been consumed, transported regularly. So these are the transactions that has taken place. So this he is seeing at his portal now. At the ice supply portal, he is now looking at all these things. Hmm. Now let us go there, and then we will now have a look at it now. Fine. So here we are able to see all this. He is able to see all these columns over here. Whenever he wants, he can very well query on this one and see this. Okay. Now let us go there. And then here we will not see the stock now. We'll go back and then see the stock. If we go to inventory and then have a look at it. inventory with small prices. And then here, if we go to on and double inventory, on and quantity. Now two is ours. Four three ninety eight is it belongs to him. So we go there. B one percentage, C O percentage we got that. And then find out. You can now see the line has got split into two lines now. The line has got split. So two and then three eighty eight. So if you go further and then have a look at it. Three ninety eight. You'll be a owning party supplier. For two, we are the owners. Because we already consumed now, transport regular has been done. So you can see the owning party for the three hundred is this, whereas for this is blank. If it is blank, we are the owners. So when you query it, what happens? It now shows you as two lines. So for these two lines, what happens? We have to create a consumption advice. We have to get a consumption advice. So let us go there and then get a consumption advice. <laughs> so consumption advice may not be here. Now find good purchasing. So what we are alternating? Create consumption advice. Cons percentage. Then we have it. Oh, it's also not here now. Percentage cons percentage. So it's also not here. Let's see if payables is there or not. Let's go to payables. Payable mission operations. So percentage C O N S percentage is also not there. So let us introduce this concurrent now. Concurrent is not visible at all. 
So let us introduce this concurrent stock voice admin. And then here you go to security and then go to responsibility and then go to request now. Go to responsibility and let us query this inventory. Fine. Inventory percentage, risk percentage, USA percentage, and then let us query the responsibility. Distribution communications, down arrow, distribution operations. It is all inclusive guy inventory is the request group now. Fine. So let us take this away. All inclusive guy. in this request group. Let me introduce this concurrent now. What is the request? Then go to query. All inclusive guy. my applications inventory. So here let us introduce this concurrent. So here is what create percentage, cons percentage, consumption advice, and control down arrow. And then we will now write the pay orders it also. Fine. Pay percentage. On percentage, any percentage that we get. So pay or is it order invoice also introduced here. So from inventory itself, we can run these two concurrent now. Fine, that was commit. It is now done. <clears throat> so we'll now go there. And then now let us switch responsibility to inventory and then from there we'll now run it. Create consumption advice. For the two quantities which are consumed by a transport regular, we are going to run the consumption advice. Okay. So create percentage cons percentage. In our company, steel authority, what happens? We used to run it only once in a week. So whatever we consumed it for the whole week, what happens? We look at only one consumption advice. We will not run it very frequently. So he has agreed also once in a week only because otherwise the workload will be very heavy. So we now do it only once in a week. And then supplier has to agree for it. Supplier site is what? Site one. And then item, if you want, you can give it. Otherwise, you can leave it. Organization is the amount. So if you want to have a specific item, we can run it. Otherwise, for all items, we can run it. And then we normally run it once in a week. So consumption advices will be created for whatever you are consumed using the transfer to regular transaction. Right? Click on OK. Then click on Submit. So now you can see the consumption advice will be created now. That will be reflecting on the high supply port loss. So supplier also can see this. So consumption and why do you know why it is running now? The first one it is the output of it for view law. There's no sense in it. Do not complete that view log of it. Says nothing else. It's probably some previous one also. Now if you go there and then see supplier can see the consumption and right? So here what happens? We'll again give a go now. Now click on the consumption advice. The consumption advice will be seen by the supplier in his eye supplier portal. Click on consumption advice. You can see. So for two dollars, two dollars, it is ten dollars each. Twenty dollars is the consumption advice. It goes as a release. Find the release for this. Six six three seven is a BPA. All the consumption advice will be going as a release for him. Only against the release, he can make a supply. He can get. A, he can claim the payment actually. Fine. Click on six six three seven. Click on it. What happens? You can now see this is a blanket release actually. With the blanket list. So if you click on it, you can have a look at the purchase order itself. Right? This is a legal purchase order for which what happens? You can now will make a supply now. Twenty dollars, and then you can now see the ship. Right? This close for receiving because we already received it. Now what happens? We have to run the pay on receipt order invoice. So once when you run it, what happens? You will now have to look at the invoice also coming up now. And then as of now, if you give the invoices, you won't be getting any invoices. You cannot see 6637 iPhone 1 is there. So PO number is what? 6637 iPhone 1. And then click on go. You won't find any invoice. So we are now going to run that pay on the zip order invoice because we are going to make a payment upon use now. So we already right. So let us go there and then run that pay on the zip order invoice. So pay percentage on percentage, re percentage in that pay on the zip order invoice. Transaction source is what? We go there and then here it is years and use. Receipt and transfer to regular stock is the transaction source, whatever you are it. So go there, ERS and use is the one. And then if you know the receipt number, you can put it otherwise, leave it with for all the receipts that you know right now. And click on OK. So this is going to push the data into the tables as an invoice. The system creates the invoice for it because he is already waiting in our place for a long time for consuming. So since upon consumption, we will not run the pay on the total invoice. And that will now trigger the payables open interface info also. It will now trigger the payables open interface also. So once when that is triggered, what happens? You cannot see a use invoice coming up now. The use invoice. 
and that will also be reflected on the eye supply portion. So it will create an invoice, uh, based, huge invoice, right, sir? Huge based invoice. Whatever you consume, based upon the consumption advices. Based upon the consumption advice, it will create a huge invoice. Now. So you used it, and then for which you are making a payment. So there is no completed fine. Click on the view output of it. You can now see a use invoice is now created on this. Use underscore the date and then I'm running it. This all can be customized actually. Okay. So the, the three part one, the first part, the second part is the date, and then the third part is the running number. Everything can be customized. So you don't know, create it along with the taxes and other things right? because M1 is having taxes, EBIS taxes there. So the invoice imported is one. So this will also reflect on the I supply as to find go there and say this. If you give a go against this six 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 zero zero go, what happens? You cannot see an invoice. Okay. No, it's not showing me. I have no say six six three zero only. Then you go. No, it's showing fine. Okay? Not even one. So against this, what happens? It will show me an invoice. Also. It is not a paid, it is in process. The moment you make a payment, it will be saying as paid also. In this place. So if you click on the home. And then here you can now see on the invoices. And then give a go. Blank go also is okay. You can now see an invoice go. And then once when the payment is made, we can go to the payments and then have a look at it also. So supplier can know everything, whatever he wants. So the major area is what in the product tab region on the consigned inventory table. And then put a go. You can see everything over here. Consumption can consume consumption advices. And the metal transaction that you can see this. this many three plus three six informations you can see from this portal how much you have consumed and then how much how much has been uh, consumption advices have been created everything so this completes the consigned inventory is it clear now and yes, so VMA we can see this but VMA is not working and so I don't I'm unable to show it all now, if you go there and see it's not fine. Home, uh, you'll be having plenty of things like this. Not fine. You can even see all the zips, all, all the admin shipment notices, and then receipts. You can see receipts, returns, and then on time performance. There are so many such things are there. If you go through the document, each and everything, they will be explaining it in a minute fashion. If you click on the orders, you can now have a look at all the orders, what has been placed or been now. This many orders are available here. You can even avoid. Request cancellation, request changes. You can even request the changes for these orders now. You can even see the view change history. Then after the supplier purchase officer will go up on this now. In the shipments part, if you see what happens, only view the shipment notices now. You can even schedule it. The results, returns, and then everything can also be seen over here now by him. And then click on the planning. <clears throat> in the planning, what happens? Uh, I don't know what exactly is there in the planning actually. It may be scheduled horizon start, maybe along with the AC pay thing probably. The finance part, what happens? You can now create what happens a purchase order. You have invoice, you can create. I will now say create invoice with a PO and then with a PO. So without a PO, we'll now create it and click on go now. You can even create a without PO also, like an advance if you want to hold. So click on go. You are now creating an and then remit to address. Fine, drop it down. <coughs> Thank you, go. So be on con supplier and supplier one. So there is a remit address. My remit to bank account and click on it. So if you know the bank account, you can choose it now. So he don't have any bank accounts and so all of it is not coming at all. My invoice number, let us say 2001 is an invoice number. And then I will put invoice description, fine. Test uh, invoice from supply portal. And then you can know what happens. Customer's tax paying aid. <clears throat> For him, what happens? He has to mention our tax paying aid. So click on it. So in the missions one, I click on it. And then let us use the mission operations one now. Uh, where is the mission operations one? For mission operations is the customer tax ID. And then leave it. And then I can even add an item point, click on add. Plus a year validation failure, amount has to be added. So the amount I must say $12. Then ship to location. Where you have to ship it to, and this M1 Seattle manufacturing. 
So ano uh, sayo man sa kinan sa Santos. Yeah, I think it manually. So we'll go to the next step now. I'll click on next one. So the customer contains information, the customer contact information is missing. So we have to say who we have to contact now. So we have to have either email or the first name or the last name. Now. So stock. You will see the stock and then back. So here's the purchase officer, which I'm doing it now. I click on next now. The contact information is right? The customer contact information is missing. So actually, we have to give the mail ID also of this now. So I will now see what is the mail ID of this uh, stock pack now. Or pack stock, I think. Maybe pack and then stock. Pack stock, then do the next now. And if you give this properly, it will not accept it now. We'll see whether it is accepting it or not. Yeah, it has accepted it. So stock in fact, the mail ID is nobody at local post. Then I will show you where exactly it is now. So for twelve dollars, what happens? He is now creating an invoice number. Fine, the, uh, the taxes are all calculated out. Fine, what else? So two thousand one is the invoice number for which what happens? The taxes are also calculated. And then the total amount twelve point eight three is the amount. I click on submit. By which what happens? It will now go into our systems. So from his portal, what happens? He can very well create what happens the invoice now. So it is now submitted on the accounts payable department. So he himself can create it now. The confirmation number is coming. So let us go and then see the invoice over there in our uh, portal now. Close it. And then switch responsibility to payables now. Payables version operations. And then go to the invoices, the inquiry invoices. So 2001 is the invoice number which I'm going to query now. Fine. PO number is not there. Fine. Invoice number is 2001. And then make a query on this now. Click on find. It will not show the invoice. Over there. Let's confirm him. And then afterwards, what happens? The payables clerk will now validate and then make a payment. And he will now go there and then he will now validate and then make a payment. <coughs> so this is how he will now process it. So supplier himself can create an invoice with PIVO and then without PIVO also. Got it now. So this is the activities which he can do from this place now. You go through each and everything, fine. You can view the invoice, you can view the product one we have seen now. So if your Oracle quality is there, you can even do it, and then you can even have. Capacity and then the order modifiers will be coming from AACP actually. AACP will tell you what are the capacity you can do it and then what are the order modifiers. And then the administration, he himself can create his own supplier users actually. He will be creating his own users and then the contact directory is visible. So you can even create more contacts in the contact directory actually. <coughs> so here you can even go and get more contacts over here and then that, that can be associated to a particular site actually. And then you can even add the banking details, and then you can also say payments and invoicing. You can click on payments and invoicing. So you can even query for whatever has been paid for you. So plenty of facilities are available here. It is actually uh, I supply portal is a thousand page document actually for all the averages. You can go there and then see each and everything. What things it will be explaining you to a greater extent of this. Oh and I don't have the document because I, I am unable to understand where exactly the document is there. I was told that it is a thousand page document, and then you can now see on this one what are all the features and functions which you can perform on different different applications on this. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not fine. Yes, sir. So we know we have seen what the AS and AS BNs we have seen now, and then the product region we are now seeing the consigned inventory. But we are unable to go for the consign vendor managed inventory. I will show you. In the vendor managed inventory, we have to go via this now. Fine, click on the home. Fine, you go to the home here. We have to go via what? We have to go via plan source pay. This is the area for vendor managing. This responsibility is responsible for it. You click on plan source pay supplier view. And then there, what happens? We have to go for BMI directly. In this responsibility, we have to go for BMI. So in this VMI, it will not show you, but as of now, we are unable to do anything at all. So this is a place where the VMI activities we are going to perform. But since the thing concurrent is not running, we cannot see anything at all. <clears throat> and then afterwards, what happens? We will now go to the sourcing, and then during sourcing, we will now see a sourcing supplier. Right. This one will be the sourcing. So sourcing will be will be using this responsibility. Okay. Likewise, these are all the six different possible, other seven or eight possible responsibilities which you can have through which one of them And then the full access portal, the main one where you'll be having plenty of activities which you can do. So we can we, we are not going to provide this responsibility to supplier, right, sir? Like, if you don't provide it, how is it going to work on all? 
So he is not doing all the activities from here, na. Fine. Mm -hmm. He can even monitor in the product of the and the consignment inventory. He can monitor what are the actions we are taking now. Fine. He's paying to go there. So, so, uh, sir, uh, when we don't implement every all the modules, then we can simply give this URL to the supplier, and he can do all the activities over there. No, no, no. See, he is collaborating with us. Now. So whatever we are consigned on, and we can have a look at it now. If I click on this, you know, see consigned on. This much is now balance available to be consumed by the supplier for 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 the customer. For the supplier, the customer is able to consume three ninety eight. We can have a look at it. So he, he we are now giving information to him. A lot of information we are giving it to him on which sub inventory is available. You can also have a look at it. So the consigned when sub inventory three ninety eight are like the consigned for him. The customer has not yet consumed this now. This is on and. Not right enough. So this is additional information which you are giving to him, and then he has no problems with it. Whereas in BMI, he is going to take an action also from this size of report. In BMI, he will be taking an action also. So, but since the collection itself is not working, I am unable to show those things basically. So whenever I get an instance where ASCP runs, I will show you the BMI also. The biggest advantage of a consignment unit is what? His material is lying in our premises, and then it is ready for consumption. And then whenever you want, you transfer it to regular. You create the consumption advice, and then you make a payment. For him, the advantage is what we have to uh, at least agree. Okay, fine, thousand five hundred quantities every month. I will not consume. In that case, he will come, and then he will not build the shed within our bad battery premises, and then he will not stock the item whenever you make a SPO. And every SPO will now go as what as a release now. Whenever you create a consumption advice, every consumption advice will be a release. Six six three seven nine five one. When against which what happens? The payment is not made. The invoices and payments are against the releases and not against the SPO. The SPO has got nothing. Three six six three eight thousand orders. We cannot pay him at all. But through the BR only, we are going to make a payment. Got it. Yes, sir. And sir, the major difference between BMI and consignment, like see, consign like supplier is going to whatever we use, like we make the payment. But BMI also the same thing. Yeah, the, the next topic is I am going to come there. In the consigned inventory, what happens? We are now first of all making a BR blanket purchase agreement. Afterwards, it is followed by SPO, and then whenever you create a consumption advice, a release is created against the BMI, and then we make a payment for whatever you consume. So here it is a just-in-time concept. That means what? Whenever you need material, it is ready-madely available in your premises, and then you consume and then pay. Fine. Whenever you need it, you are going to consume. It. Whereas VMI is not like that. VMI, he will now create the purchase order. Right? Releases, he is going to create. The six six three seven iPhone one is released now. That he will be creating it. So what he will do is he will now see the stock levels. Let us say hundred and five hundred are the limits which you are given to him now. So in the morning he will now have a look at it. The stock is only seventy five. So he has to replenish it to a level of five hundred. So four twenty five quantities he has to supply. So he will now create a what happens? A yeah, replenishment release from the ice supply bottle. He will now create a replenishment release from the ice supply bottle. What he will do is he will now go there. He will now go to plan source pay responsibility. He will now click on the VMI and then query for the item now. Let's say B1 percentage BMI percentage. Now it will not be available. You will not see any item is there or not. You are not creating any item now. You will not see B1. And then you will go blank. And then we are creating any BMI item or not because it is not saying okay. When I will not stick this AZ card. If I click on go now. So the moment you give a go, the item what happens? It will not show you. The thing is coming. It is not coming here. Nothing is correct actually. Fine. It will now show you. From here, what happens? He is going to make a release now. So only when it comes, I can show it to you. Fine, not coming here. He will now make a release. The blanket release will be made by him, and then what happens? It will go back to him as a release. He will now create a replenishment release, which will now be converted into a blanket release by the system. So whenever he performs a replenishment release from his website, let us say three hundred quantities, he is now going to perform. So for that much of quantities, what happens? The system will now create a blanket release, and then against the blanket release, we are going to make a supply, and then he will be paid for it. So replenishment task is given to the supplier. Supplier is now going to act as a collaborator, and then he will now maintain the stocks. If he fail to maintain the stocks between the hundred and five hundred level for more than two days in a month, he will no more our BMI supplier. He will now lose the privilege 
We will not cancel the agreement with you. And so what happens? You will always be sincere and then try to maintain the stock levels between the stipulated levels of 100 and 500 or whatever it is throughout the month. So you will now verify whether he is maintaining the stocks properly or not. He is not supposed to supply with too much beyond 500. Maybe 550 is okay, but if the stock levels goes well beyond that level, he will be again questioned. So within that bandwidth, he is supposed to maintain. That is all. So in a VMI, he creates the replenishment release for which what happens, he will be given a blanket release and then he will now make a pay on the zip also. Whereas in a consigned one, he will not do it. We only will consume whenever we need. Whenever we need, we consume and then we pay a bigger bill. So both things are basically two different concepts. Of one is now just-in-time concept as far as consignment is concerned. And VMI, what happens, we are outsourcing the maintenance of stock levels to a third party. We don't have manpower or our planning department is not fully equipped and so what happens. This item has been handed over to the supplier. Array, are you maintain it? Maintain the stock levels. So you will not take extra pains of maintaining the stock levels. In the GE, what happens is that we don't supply him every day through collection plan. Supplier himself will come over there and then he will not take down the stock levels and then he will not send the blanket. Orders. So company to company it will vary now. So if you run the collection plan, what happens? It will now inform him regarding how much he has to maintain. That will be communicated to him. So this is a major difference between the VMI as well as the consignment. Okay. So, so in iPortal, the major thing is like, I, sorry, I supplier, we, we can uh, use the uh, ASN, ASBN. The ASBN. And then uh, what happens here? Monitor his consigned activities in the product region. And then in the finance region, he himself can create an invoice and then send it over there now. The okay. finance, not finance. Uh, oh, where is it here? Danny. The finance, give me that one. Ah, yeah, the finance. No, well, let me see the invoice number. Which one, sir? Which one? Bad, you can tell the invoice now. Yes, like uh, in the finance itself. Yeah, in the finance one, you know. Let's see, we have created an invoice now. Admin, what? sorry, uh, go, can you go to admin? I, I just... Admin is only for his own purposes. We can even finance ask. Finance only. Finance only. Finance only. Finance invoice number is there, no? In the payments, the invoice number is there, okay. But, uh, in finance, finance, finance. Maybe. Finance. Yeah. Uh, finance view, invoice payments is there. We are able to view the invoice and payments. How come it has gone there? We click on the phone now. Let us go there. And then click on the iSupply portal full access. And then you go to the finance tab. Yeah, here. Yeah. yeah. With the PO or without the PO, you can create an invoice and then you can send it to us now. So we can even say view invoice, view payments, and then create invoice also. I don't know why. So you can even get an invoice. And the product region, if Oracle quality is there, we can do it. And then for ACP, the capacities can be made along the order monitor. So what is the major usage of quality models? Sir? Like everyone is quality. quality. Uh, what happens uh, if you have some quality inspection required, then you'll be creating a collection plan. You run the thing and then the fan has to run at thousand fan lot. And then what happens, you'll now make some quality checks. Fine. And the color should be so and so. What happens uh, there? What's called uh, the density must be so and so. Likewise, what happens? You'll be having some quality, uh, uh, the same. Uh, what happens? Plans now. So if it is not matching it, it will be even rejected. Actually, mm -hmm. I told you now I was having one document, but uh, I lost it actually. I don't know how to. Oh, quality documents are actually. Yeah. Fine. One of the guy who has given me, but uh, I lost it actually some long time back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how to? Sir, do you know quality models are actually. I don't know. I do it. I will, uh, told you uh, since I don't know. The mm -hmm. So, likewise, what happens? You have different tab regions, and then uh, one document explains it beautifully. Uh, that document also I lost it, and then I'm I don't have any user guide or anything like that on supply portal. Nothing. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I got a beautiful document, and then uh, I read it some six years back. Afterwards, oh. some other I lost it. Beautiful. You try in googling or uh, in the metalink, it may be available. Mm -hmm. Sure. Tell you all the possible things which you can do from my supply portal. And every responsibility, what are things you can do. So, for the sourcing supplier, we will now see during sourcing how the sourcing supplier is going to work. Mm -hmm. Sourcing supplier will be seeing this sourcing page. So, during sourcing, we will not come into this area. 
Okay. And sir, like, so we have, uh, now we have completed the ice supply or something? Yeah, we have completed the ice supply. Okay. Oh, in high procurement, uh, the punch out uh, something. Yeah, so the punch have... out uh, will not go to the ice supplier portal. Actually, it will go to the suppliers portal directly. Say, for example, Dell.com. So Dell would have given you a separate, what happens, yeah, uh, URL. So it will now go to that URL and then you will now shop it and then come back to ice procurement. It will not go to ice supply portal. Actually. Oh, punch okay. outs and transparent punch outs will not come to ice supply portal, but mm -hmm. it will now take you to the supplier's URL, supplier's site, and then there you shop it and then you will now come back to your eye procurement requisitions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and if any, any like interviewer asks, like what is punch out means, we can say that there is a transparent and non transparent punch out. In the punch out, what happens, you will now be shopping on the supplier's uh, what's called website. There's a dedicated website will be there. So what happens, Oracle has given a 30% discount on all the laptops. And so what happens, whatever you select it, you will be getting a 30% discount, whereas for others, that discount will not be available. So you will be getting the 30% discount and then you will not come back and then you will not shop it. Whereas in the transparent punch out, what happens, you will not go to the supplier's website at all. In your, in your shopping cart itself, what happens, everything will be visible. And then that itself, you will be shopping it. So all the items which have been negotiated by the supplier, by the purchase officer, everything will be visible when you click on the shop. What happens? It will be visible on your screen itself. And then you can choose any any item, and then what happens? It will be given to the shopping cart, and then it will now be checked out. So transparent means what? His items are transparent on your login itself. It will be visible there. There is a normal punch out. You will be taken away to some other website. From there, it will come back to yours. So all these things are set by the technical actually. Technical will be setting it up. And then finally, okay. what happens? You will be using it actually. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you where, where exactly you'll use it now. Sure, sir. Okay, sure, sure. So we go there. How to set from our side? Administration. When you go to the high procurement administration, <clears throat> you go to the stores. You go to the stores. <clears throat> and then here, you know, see Dell computers. Fine. Punch out the Dell computers. Fine. Let us know. Go on the number. You will now create this uh, punch out site now. You click on what happens, you know, with the image and all. And then here, Dell Computer UK is the content zone which you're going to write. So let us go and see the content zone of Dell Computers UK. There. Cancel it. So the store is having the Dell Computers UK. So you go to the, go to the content zones and then see the Dell content. Dell Computers UK direct. If you go on and edit it, <coughs> you will now create your content zone like this. So your identity number will be given by the supplier as well as a punch out URL will be given by him. So these informations, the supplier name, the supplier ID, and then the identity ID will be given by him. And then he will also give you the passwords for going in. So everything will be provided by him. And then through the e-commerce gateway, he will now set up this. Through the e-commerce gateway. So when you click on this, it will be taking you directly to this website, punch out URLs. Okay, fine. So this is what is. So your domain, your identity, the supplier name, supplier ID, and then punch out URL will be given by the suppliers. So you will now create a content zone based upon this now. And then when you go and then shop, you know, see when I shop it, what will happen? Go there. And then let us switch response with I procurement now. When you perform a shopping here, <coughs> it will not take you to that URL directly. For which the e commerce gateway has to be done. So, if you click on this one, compare us now, it will not take because it is not set at all. Thank you, it will be erroring all. The connection to the cannot be established because here the e commerce gateway has not been set technical at all. Otherwise, you will now be taken directly to the uh, uh, Dell direct computers. You can direct that, that uh, website, it will not take it there. You shop and then come back, it will now come as a requisition. I was having a document yeah. on how to set up the e-commerce gateway. Uh, mm -hmm. The Anil Pasi. If you go to Anil Pasi's site, it will now explain you how to set up e procurement from a technical perspective. Fully it is written. Mm -hmm. And if you know technically, you can understand that also. Anil Pasi's website, you can see e procurement. They got a big document on the 
punch outs. Okay. So this is a transparent punch out, right? It will no, take to. It is not a transparent punch out. It is a direct punch out, right? It will go there. In a transparent punch out, what happens? You will be able to see the Dell product here itself in your screen itself. All the okay. products along with the diagram and everything will be transparent. Uh, this is non-transparent punch out. Non-transparent. No, non-transparent. Not. Uh, I don't say non-transparent. One is a punch out. Other one is a transparent punch out. There is no such non-transparent punch out. In the punch out, you will be taken to the supplier's website. In a transparent punch out, you will not shop by being in your own website itself. You will not go to supplier's website. Okay. The technical aspect is very important because creating a content zone, whatever values you are giving, you are going to put over there, then you are going to do it. As, uh, <clears throat> configuring it from a technical perspective is a big one as far as punch outs are concerned. I will not search for the document if it is available. I will not send it to you. Otherwise, you can go to Anil Pass's site. It will explain fully about how to configure an iProcurement punch out, hmm. how to use the e commerce gateway, and then how to do it. And all. Everything is written systematically. I couldn't understand. I saw that once and then I couldn't make anything on the hidden data. <laughs> technically, technically, it's really said, Oh my God, very tough actually. Even after you work for such a long time, what happens? You will not be recognized at all. That is the biggest problem. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you cannot even remember. You have no recognition at all. Are you come, Karjana sir? You take the next job. Like that, what happens? They will not give you. But nobody will even appreciate you that you have done such a big job. No. Whereas in functional, it is not so because you are not de dealing directly with the end client. So yeah, yeah. Here it's different. That's a good thing. Tomorrow, I am having a function in the morning. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. 